In this video, I'm going to take a look at an introduction to vectors. Now, I'm calling this an introduction, but I'm not going over anything new in this video. It's more of a recap of everything we covered in GCSE Maths for vectors. Let's just begin with the basic idea of what a vector represents here. So, a vector has both magnitude and direction. If I try and draw an example here, let's say up here, then we draw the direction here with this arrow. That shows we're going to go in this direction. So, if I start at A and I finish at B here, then my vector is the vector. A, B. Okay, like so. So like I said, that just means we start at A and we finish at B. If I want to draw the opposite direction here with A and B being in the same place, if I try and draw this here, again, A and B are in the same place, but we go in the opposite direction now. If we draw our arrow in the opposite direction to signal this, then my vector now will be B, A. Okay, like so. And again, notice that we always put our arrow above here to show that this is a vector. If I carry on with this point about notation here, um, sometimes we might use a small single letter to signal a vector. So for example, I might use the letter um, A here, so just a single letter A, um, that's on its own. And I draw a little line underneath here to show that this is a vector. So this is the vector A, okay? So again, that might crop up as well, but this is the key idea behind the notation that we're gonna be using throughout these set of videos, okay? So I'm gonna clear that now, and let's just go through a few more points here for our introduction on vectors. So I've got two vectors that are equal. So if the vector AB is equal to the vector CD here, okay, then what we can say is AB and CD are equal in length. They are equal in length. Just jot this down here. And they must be parallel. Okay, so they're also parallel. So that's an important point to make there. What I want to go through now is the triangle law for vectors. So the triangle law here So what is the triangle law? Well let's just take three points here. I've got point X, Y, Z. So that's X, Y and Z here. So if I've got the vector x, y, so we start at x and go to y, we put our arrow in that direction, and I've then got the vector y, z, so we start at y and go to z, so we put our arrow there to show the direction. Then under the triangle law here, then the vector x, y, plus the vector y, z, this will be equal to the vector x, z. Okay, like so. So what we're saying here, is that these two vectors added together is just the same as going from x to z there in that direction, okay? In other words, if I think about the vector x, y here, if that's equal to x, if y, z is equal to y, so that's x, that's y, so x plus y would just be equal in that case, making this equal to z, and that would just be x plus y is equal to z there, okay? So that's the triangle law. Um, for addition of vectors. So again, I'm just going to clear the screen one more time here now just to finish with um, our final couple of points here. So we just clear one more time here. So let's take a look now at multiplying a vector by a scalar. Okay, so multiplication or multiplying by a scalar. Just make a note of this here. So multiplying by a scalar. So if we multiply by a positive number, with the exception of um, one here, so let's make a note here of multiplying by a positive scalar, with the exception of one, then what we get here is our vector goes in the same direction. So it goes in the same direction, but we have a new length, okay? Same direction, but new length. Now, be careful here, a bit of a misconception with this is um, that because we're multiplying by a positive scalar, then the length must always be um, greater, be a bigger length. But that's not necessarily true because if you think about it, if we multiply through by a half, then um, the length would get smaller, okay? A half is clearly positive, but it means the length would be smaller, okay? So it doesn't always mean that it would be um, a bigger length. So that's the case for a positive scalar. 
So we think about a negative scalar here. So negative now, again, with the exception in this case of minus one. So negative with the exception of minus one. Then in this case, what happens now is we have the opposite direction. We have opposite direction, opposite direction. And we also have a new length. Okay. And again, that might be bigger um, or smaller and new length there. Okay, so similar to the case of what we had there for multiplying through by a positive scalar. Okay. And then finally, just one last point to make here. Any vector that's parallel to, say, a vector A here. Okay, so if any vector is parallel, so if it's parallel to the vector A here. Okay, we'll just draw a line underneath to signal that this is a vector. And at this point here, um, we must also multiply this through by um, a scalar. Okay, so in that case, we use lambda to represent this. So if it's parallel to the vector a, then we multiply it through by a scalar. Okay, in other words, it's going to be a multiple of that. So then we get lambda a. Okay, like so. Okay, where lambda is a non zero scalar. That's a non zero scalar. Okay. And there we have it. So that's our final point. And that brings us to the end of this video on introduction to vectors. I'm not going to run through any questions here because, like I said, this is more of an introduction um, or a recap of material from GCSE Math. So I don't really feel like we need any questions um, for this video. But in the next video, we're going to take a look at representing vectors.